and welcome back to Trinity Community Business and Enrichment Center. We're now entering into Module 2. I am your teacher, Nikki Garcia, and on today, we'll begin to talk about coding, the beginning of, the be, the beginning of HTML coding. Okay, so here we go. Um, code is a language just like any other dialect. Um, some people may beg to differ when it comes to the fact that I'm saying that zeros and one is a language, but I consider zeros and one, which is very binary code, a language. And it's the language that computers understand. Um, so that is what you would consider low level programming. Um, that's, that's commands that is simplest form. Then you have another variation is called high level programming. Okay. And then with high level programming, we have beautiful things like how our operating systems are now. You just do a click on a mouse and your mouth, those clicks, every click and every movement and every key and every tap on, on your computer is interpreted to zeros and ones, a language in which the computer understands. But when you're programming, what I mean by high level language is um, we use words um, as opposed to just zeros and ones. When I was in school, um, we used to have sort of like a architectural architecture class and we actually had to use compiler language and I'm, or they call it assembly language and that assembly language was we actually had to write in zeros and ones and um, the only thing that the computer was able to do was to add and to subtract zeros and ones that's really all that our computer can do and that's all that it can understand but when it came down to us learning other languages like JavaScript or Java or C++ or any other language that we had to learn then it started having things like integer and the name of the integer and then you'll have something like um, char in the name of the char which is a letter so um, that 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 particular set of language is what is what they consider high level language because it's like in 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 human language language that people understand okay so that's the only thing that the browser um, understands as well is those types of commands so now the browser only understands I mean the browser interprets everything everything that you put all the code that you put on your page into HTML HTML okay so that's the reason why we write in HTML HTML is hypertext markup language okay and that is the language that the browser understands Okay, so when you get ready to build your website, that's why you write in HTML. So now the browser, what it's going to do is it's going to read all the code that you have inside your page and then it's going to interpret it. Okay, so now when you're getting ready to start your um, HTML document, and I'm using Dreamweaver for the case of um, this course, you go to File, you go to New. I already had Dreamweaver open. And you'll see it'll have blank page in HTML. Um, I'm using CS4. I believe that Adobe now is on CS6, um, but the variation isn't too much of a difference. I mean, um, graphically is different, but it's not that much of a difference. So we're going to create a page. And when you create that page, what you will now have is you'll have the doc type. Um, which will, and then you'll have your HTML tag. Now, right after the HTML tag, you'll see uh, HTML, you'll see X, M, L, and S, and then it has the W3 consortium web address. Okay, so basically you're telling them, hey, this is the version that I am using, okay? So that's why I was telling you in our previous module, when it comes down to HTML, um, what, whatever you have thereafter, these two different things will tell the browser what version of HTML you're using. I believe now people are trying to get into HTML5, and HTML5 doesn't have all that stuff on it, it's just HTML. <laughs> so anyways, and then You'll have um, your meta tags um, that is necessary. You'll have your title tag, and your title tag is the title of your document, your head tag. Uh, you have your two bodies tags, and your ending HTML tags. Okay, so now um, these are the tags that are necessary to start 
or to have an HTML page. Um, all tags have an open and a close, okay? So initially, your open it looks like this. It doesn't have a slash. But every time you have a closing to your tag, it will have a slash before the end of the um, tag name, okay? So now, inside of your head tag, this is where you'll put all of your scripts. Um, you'll put CSS, or you'll put your JavaScript, or you'll put all your links to whatever other scripts that you have on your particular server, okay? So, um, let's say for instance, um, this is what a CSS tag would look like, and we talked about this as uh, cascading style sheets, and this um, particularly lets you, this, this type of script allows you to lay out your page or design your page or tell the browser how you want your page. I'm so sorry, it should be style, not CSS. Or um, tell your browser how you want your, uh, your page to look. So the, one of the tags that it utilizes is the body tag. And the body basically says, okay, well, in the body, this is what I want my body to look like, okay? So one of the things I want to talk about is font family. And your font family could be a variation of things. Typically, um, you don't necessarily just have one. Um, you might have three fonts that you would choose, up to three. And the reason why you do this is because um, different browsers interpret um, scripts different kind of ways and some browsers might not necessarily have the packages for those scripts um, but your basic fonts will be Times New Roman um, your basic fonts will also be Georgia um, Sans Serif fonts um, uh, just Tahoma. Tahoma is a basic font as well. But you want to make sure that Arial, Arial is a basic one. You want to make sure that you have um, three, three defined. Okay, so when you do that, um, you'll say font family times new Roman times and serve. And you, every time after every command when you're scripting, you want to put um, a semicolon. And that semicolon tells it tells the computer, okay, that's the end of this particular sentence or this particular command, okay? So that's what a style sheet will, or style would look like inside of a document. Okay, the next tags that are important for you to have, now that's not important right off back, um, that's just one of the things you want to do when it comes to design. An important tag that you need to have is your title tag, um, and it basically will be the name of the document. The name of this document would be um, home page, home, and uh, let's just say our company is um, live web design. Okay, so what the reason why I utilize a pipe was because um, in SEO, um, um, they, they basically want you to have the the theme of the page, so basically what the page is about, a pipe in the name of the site, okay? And you know, it's just like your www.com name. So let's say I will have www.livedesigns.com and the pipe will be live web design, okay? Another um, important tag that you will have, um, made a tag that you will have is your um, keywords tag. That's a very important tag. Um, these keywords basically tell Google, hey, this is what my page is about. And you don't necessarily want to have more than three keywords, okay? So let's just say that my keywords would be web design. My keyword would be, um, let's say, programming. Another keyword would be um, a location, South Florida. Okay, and so um, this will basically say that my page talks about web design, programming, and South Florida. Web design on these items inside of South Florida. Okay, then the next thing that you want to go ahead on and um, another meta tag you want to think about is your description tag. Okay, the description basically talks about 
um, what that page is about as well. Um, but it gives a little detail. And it's typically not over 30 characters. So let's just say um, Live Design develops websites for your business. Call now. Call now for inquiry. Okay, so what ends up happening is when you go into Google and let's just say you looked up live web design, when you look that up, what will come up is this description right here. Live designs develops websites for your business. Call now for inquiry. So that is what you um, want to make sure, that's the reason why you want to make sure that you define your description because when Google parses your page, that's what will appear in the search engine tags, okay? So these are, these three right here are your very important tags. Your title, your keywords, and your description. Okay, and all those things belong in head along with our styles as we talked about. And what we did earlier, of course, was we, we set our font to Times New Roman so that it will be consistent throughout the page. Okay, and now we're going to move on into teaching about things and objects that belong on the page in your body tag. Okay, so in your body. In your body, you can have all kind of objects. Um, you can have images. You can have text. You have a tag. One of the tags that we have is a paragraph tag. And the paragraph tag is a P. And let me show you how that looks and how that works. Okay. So in your P tag, what you will put in there is your content. Um, so let's just say Live Web Designs cares about your business. We want to see your business grow. Okay, so that would be things that you will put inside of your P tag, uh, um, any kind of paragraphs that you're going to have. And every time that you start a new paragraph, then you use another set of open and close tags for paragraphs. Okay, now one of the things that's very important to start off with inside of your um, the body of your page is the H1 tag. These are header tags. And this is just another thing that reiterates what your page is about. And this is how the search engines determine as well um, what your page is about. What, what, is, what are you trying to accomplish in this, particular, in this particular page? So as we talked earlier, we said keywords. Okay, so let's, um, let's look at that. H1 is your first tag, okay? First header tag. And then um, you can put um, web design in South Florida. Okay, so now when you do that, you've basically covered two of your keywords that you have inside of your page. And also, you have reiterated and redefined again, once again, hey, this is what my page is about. My page is about web design in South Florida, and my company is Live Web Design, okay? Um, so we have our H1 tag, which is, this is something that's very important when it comes to SEO, okay? Title, keywords, description, H1. Okay, so we have our H1 tag, and then we have our paragraph tag. Okay, so now another kind of tag that you can have on your page is could, could be considered an image tag. I mean, yes, an image tag. Um, and normally when you save a document, you save that document as your index. Um, and it will be the extension that you're um, scripting in. So right now we're scripting, scripting in HTML. Um, but if you go into, you delve into other kind of scripts like um, PHP, ASP, JSON, whatever the case may be, that page will be indexed at whatever the end, um, the whatever language you're scripting in, that extension. So that PHP, whatever. But right in this case, we're doing .html, so we're going to name this index.html. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead on and add an image to the page. So we have our IMG tag source. We're going to let me get 
it there. I want to go to my images folder. I'm just going to pick up or pick a random image. I'm going to try to find one that's not um, too big. In this case, it's an Amazon.com image. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, Dreamweaver closed the tag for you. You didn't necessarily have to close the tag. Okay, so now this will put an image on our page. So you want to see what that looks like. I'm going to go into Code and Design View, and you'll see that we have our Amazon.com image on our page. Um, so that's one of the tags that you can utilize for your page. Um, another tag that we want to let's, let's talk about is um, your tables. And tables are for tabular data, okay? And um, when we first started making websites, um, and people started really doing some really cool creative things with them, um, they, used, they started getting into using tables. And um, I mean, the layouts for the websites became so much more beautiful, but um, websites weren't necessarily supposed to be designed in those kind of tables. But people made the best of it. Um, so here we are. We're going to go ahead on and show you what that looks like. So the open tag for a table is T-A-B-L-E, open and close. The next thing you have is your tiara, and tiara stands for a table row. And then you'll have your TD, and TD starts for tabul TD stands for tab tabular data, and so you have your open and close of that. So what happens is, right now we'll have one row and one column. So table row, that's one row. TD, the tabular data, is the, for the columns. So you have one row and one column. And then we'll go ahead on and just close that. And then we'll end our table with the closing tag. So we have our open and close for everything. Inside of our table, we want to put some kind of text. It doesn't particularly matter what. But let's just say we love web design. OK? So now you will be able to see what the table looks like. And now you have your text inside of a table. And when I click on it, you can see that's the table. Now I can go ahead on and add another column to this um, table by copying the same data, another row and another column. And we'll call it um, We Love Web Design Part 2. And then you'll see right here we have loaded row. We added another row. Now I want to add another column. If I want to add another column, I'll copy the TD and I'll put another TD up under the part two. And you'll see it coming over to the side. So there you have it. To add more columns, we use our TD. To add more rows, we use our tiara. And that's pretty much um, how tables work. Um, you can use, utilize tables, uh, table headings, because tables are, they're a very vast subject. You have table headings, you can even put out tags on your tables as well, as we talked about earlier for ADA, um, to describe what the table is about. Um, hold on, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, so tables can have a description and you use the summary tag to define what the table um, is about. So here we can say this table is about how much we love web design. <laughs> okay, and uh, that's how you will uh, handle that and utilize that. All right. All right. So now we have our table out of the way. Um, you also, and I, I want to go back to the heading tags because I forgot to mention this. You have different types of headings. You have your H1, your H2, and your H3. Um, typically, people don't go past H3 too much. Um, 
there are H4s, there's H5s. And the only thing that happens when you're dealing with all these H1 tags is they get bigger and then they get smaller. And I'm going to show you how it looks um, when you're doing your H2. And you see how smaller it got there. And I'm going to let you see what it looks like when you do your H3. And then you see it down there. So um, Web Design in South Florida just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, you can keep going, like I said, but it's, an, it's not necessary. Most people don't go past the H3 tags. And a lot of times, um, Google doesn't particularly care um, how many, once you get past, you can only have one H1 tag, but it, they'll let you, Google let you have as many H2 tags as you want. So, you know, as you're going in, down your page and you have different paragraphs that you're trying to explain. So let's say, for instance, on your website, you'll have my mission. That could be an H2 tag, and then you have your paragraph. And then you have um, my services, and then that would be another big H2 tag. And you, so it doesn't care. You can use the same H2, H2 tags over and over again. And these H2 tags can also be styled um, in CSS2. Um, CSS is going to be a totally different module. That will actually be a part of Module 3, so I'm not going to go back into that again. But I will teach you more about that um, in Module 3, okay? Okay, so we talked about tables, and we talked about adding images. We talked about our H1 through H, um, H1 through H3 tags. We talked about the paragraph tag. Okay, um, so now we want to talk about divs. Okay, so divs, divs are cool. Divs are containers where that just holds objects. Okay, and um, um, this is the very thing that has replaced. Um, the tables. Um, remember when I told you that as we went down the line, at first we were using tables, but then things changed and we started using divs. Okay, so this is what a div tag looks like. Yeah, the open and close of the div. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Went too far down. Okay, so this is the open and the close of the div. All right, and so inside of this div, you can style it to make it as big as you want it, okay? It could be big, it could be small, whatever the case may be. Now, a lot of times when you're designing your web, web page, we, in the, inside of a div, um, we normally set the height to auto, and we make the width a certain set or fixed width. Um, this, it could be 100%. Now, this is another thing to consider. When you're building your website um, and you're building it for the mobile phone, you don't necessarily want to use too many fixed sizes. You want to use percentage. The reason why you want to use percentage is so that it'll automatically adapt to whatever device that you have. So nowadays we have like a bunch of different devices. We have tablets, we have mobile phones, we have, and all these devices are different shapes, you know? And so you want your site to be able to be adaptable. So what happens is you put it inside these div containers and then you give it a percentage so that anytime, it go, anytime any shape, any form, it'll, it'll conform and it'll just be like a scalable site. It'll be kind of like an automatic site, even though you're not, you know, resizing it, but it'll resize to the, um, to the um, particular object that the person is using or viewing the site on. So anyways, that's just a sidebar and we'll teach you how to do that in CSS um, in our next module, but that's just a sidebar. So here we go. So you have your div and inside of your div, um, you typically set the margins to zero. Um, and the reason why you set the margins to zero is because a lot of times when you have a website, was it, what ends up happening is you have a div and there is going to be like a margin on top. There's going to be a margin on the bottom. It's going to be a margin, margins on the side, a left and a right margin. And if you want everything to be tighten it. In other words, that like when you look at things in the browser, not, there's no space in between because sometimes you'll see where the site will drop down from outside of the browser and that's because the margin isn't tight. The margin isn't zero. So if you want everything to be closed and real tight um, inside of that window that you have in the browser, then you will set your margins to zero. Okay, so now here we go. Simple div. Um, I'm just going to give it a style real quick so that I can show you um, the height and how all that stuff works. Um, let's just say 600 pixels. And inside this div, we want to put just a little bit of text. 
I'm going to say happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> and um, we're going to go ahead on the zoom out so you can see how things look in Dreamweaver. So now you can see this div. It is 600 pixels high. So you see it. I mean, when you scroll down, you see how far down it goes because it, it, set its, it set its height. And inside of that div, we have happy, happy, joy, joy. So um, now, if I wanted this div not to have any space to the left or the right, then we set our margins. Um, but like I said, we'll do that in another time. Okay, so that's the next thing to consider um, having on your website is a div. Those are your open and close for your div. Okay, now um, you might want to have kind of like um, font colors and font styles. Um, you can deal with your font colors inside your CSS. I'm just going to go back up to the top real fast just so we can go ahead on and go over it real fast. You just set the color and the color can be blue, it can be pink or whatever, but whatever you do, as you see in Dreamweaver, it makes you easy. It makes it easy. You just go in there and you just click on the color that you like. And of course, you end your statement with a semicolon. And um, when you do that, you see everything turns blue. So yeah, that was fun, right? <laughs> so now we have a big old blue site. Um, so those are the different things that you can do uh, for your website. I'm going to go ahead on and save it. And I'm going to let you go ahead on and see it. We can see it by pressing F12. Um, because Dreamweaver allows you to define which browser you want to utilize. And this is what your website looks like right now. Um, it doesn't look like much of anything, but for now we're learning things. And in the learning process, you need to learn the different scriptings, different codes, whatever the case may be. So you learn a div, you learn how to change colors, you learn about CSS, you learn about SEO a little bit, some title tags, all your meta tags that you need to have. You've learned about the paragraph tags. You learned a lot in this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it didn't confuse you too much. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. See you for the next module, module three. Bye-bye.